Middle Jesus, I'm back again with Drunken Mr. Paul, DMP, in the house. That's right, and today we're here to talk about a side of Sierra that doesn't get a lot of love, and that is Dynamics. Now, Dynamics was bought by Sierra, but they did kind of the cooler, action-y kind of games mm -hmm. and simulators like Aces Over Europe, Ace Over the Pacific, and the Earth Siege series. Now, they got their start actually making the very first MechWarrior game for Activision back in 1989. And that kind of started the whole BattleBot genre of gaming, and we're going to check out that history and our connection with it. Let's take a look. Earth Siege's full title was called Metal Tech Earth Siege. It was developed by Dynamics in 1994 for DOS. Now, back in the day, DOS meant that we in tech support had to create boot disks for you so you could run the game because there's only 640 kilobytes of memory you could use. And a lot of these games used up to like 600 of that. So you had no room for your drivers for sound cards, etc. Earth Siege is set in the 25th century. At this point, humans are battling an artificial intelligence known as Prometheus and his army of cybrids that we created and came back to get us. Not that you've ever heard this plotline ever before in all of human existence. This will be a standard patrol mission. Visit the assigned waypoints and destroy any cyber patrols you encounter. So in the game, the player pilots a HERC, which stands for Human Form Emulation Robotic Combat Unit, as opposed to a mech that was part of the Mech Warrior game. And because of copyright stuff, they couldn't use it. So they went with Herc, which sounds like you're coughing up your breakfast. Herc! One of the really cool things about Earth Siege was that it was a full 3D simulation style game, as opposed to an arcade style like Mech Warrior. Another really cool part that I found interesting was that you could target specific parts of your enemy Herc, uh, shooting at their legs or their head or their reactor which was, for some reason, the reactor was right where, when a human, their junk would be. So one of the goals was to blast away your enemy's junk. So we got a huge laugh out of that when we were testing it. But the other part of that is that it would uh, leave certain amounts of scrap around that you could collect, and that was uh, another key strategic point uh, for the game, because you can build other stuff out of it. One of the things I really, really loved about Earth Siege is that you could issue order to your squad mates. You could have a squad, and you know a lot of games uh, now have all kinds of squad-based uh, fighting. But this was one of the first ones I ever played where you could do this, and it was actually pretty cool. It's simple. You just tell them to do certain things, and they would go and do it. So because of this, most of the battles were using multiple hercs on either side at the same time. Another part of the game that I really, really liked was that you could outfit your Herc before the battle to set up with different kinds of weapons or, uh, or hard point loads. Now, hard points, that's where your weapons go on for you non-military geeks out there. And that way you could set it up for different battles. For example, you know, the, uh, the miniguns were for tearing down your armor. Energy weapons took down shields. And depending on what you used those for and what your mission was, that was a total key to success. It is the year 2624. Mankind has been pushed to the brink of extinction in a war against the deadly cyber race it has created. Having narrowly defeated the initial uprising, Earth's terror defense units now brace for the imminent attack of off-world cyber force massing on the far side of the moon. Dynamics followed up Earth Siege in late 1995 with Earth Siege 2, and it was released for Windows 95. Now, some of the really standout features for that was that they doubled the game resolution to 640 by 480, which at the time, that was that was pushing it a little bit. And they also added support for 3D accelerator cards, which were starting to get kind of popular at the time. Almost two years later, the system requirements for the game had doubled since the original one, but this allowed them to add a little bit more varied terrain Things like hills and valleys, as opposed to the really flat and kind of uninteresting terrain of the original game. One of the more standout features of the game was the branching mission structure that allowed you to sometimes fail a mission, but yet not fail the game, which was really nice because I'm terrible at these games sometimes, and so it's nice to have that in there and kind of 
coddle me along a little bit. Another neat feature to Earth Siege 2 is the addition of the air vehicle called the Razor. Now this allowed you to add air support to your missions. And Dynamics created a bunch of classic flight simulators like the Aces, the A-10, the Red Baron games. And it just felt like they added those classic games to this one. And it was, it was a nice inclusion. Active radar mode. Overall, I think Earth Siege 2 is much better than the original. They refine the controls, the graphics are way better. Also, the, the missions are more varied. And it's just overall a really great game now. Keep in mind though, it's actually pretty difficult to get run on modern computers. So you may be tempted to go back and play the original Earth Siege, but if you can put in the time, it is possible to get Earth Siege 2 to run. So Metal Jesus, you actually did alpha testing on Earth Siege 2, right? Yeah, I did. Uh, it was one of the, the perks of working at Sierra. This developer showed up and he had a burn copy of the game. And of course, the first thing I need to know is, you know, what kind of system does this need? Mm -hmm. And I just about fell out of my chair when he said we needed a Pentium with 32 megs of RAM. 32 megs? Yeah. Holy smokes. So was there anything in the department that even had that? No, we had nothing in the department. And, and it's because at the time, most systems had 8 megs, 16 if you, you had crazy amounts of money. More money than sense. Yeah. And I was just like, who is this game for? I mean, I had no idea. I mean, how could you possibly ship out a game like this? And it was really telling because he, he basically said that in the last couple months of development, what they do is they... they they start here with this big bucket of, of system requirements and they slowly whittle it down to to get to where you know the public can buy this game and play it on their systems. Gotcha. They optimize the graphics, they optimize the code, and that's how they get there. And so it was a real kind of insight into game development. And, and this thing was running on DOS, as I recall. You could run it on DOS, and yeah. we were still making boot disks to get the games to run, even yeah. with that. So requiring 32 megs of RAM, I mean, that was that was crazy money. I think RAM back there was like $1,000 a meg or some crazy. It, it, was, it was crazy. It could have been actually that, that they were also developing this for Windows. And at the time, Windows was not very optimized. And so it seemed like every version that ran in Windows usually used twice as many uh, resources. Ah, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, so it was it was actually pretty cool. And now we come to Star Siege. Now that was released in 1999 when we all partied. And the cool thing about Star Siege is it changed the way you controlled your Herc. Instead of moving the guns and everything all at once with the top of your turret so it always fired at one point, now you could use a mouse-based control system like a first-person shooter like Half-Life or Quake. So you can move the targeting reticle all over your screen while you moved your Herc and it really upped the dynamics of the game. Something that was very cool about Star Siege is that for the first time you could play as the Cyber Edge. You get to play as the bad guys! So it was really, really cool, but uh, I found that playing as a Cybrids wasn't quite as much fun. I finished the whole game as a humans, but for the Cybrids, it didn't really catch me. Oh, the character names were great, including one of my pilots called Eater of Heads. Now, when Star Siege was coming out, it was supposed to be more than just man versus Cybrids. It was supposed to be this whole corporations versus Cybrids versus other humans. But unfortunately, due to the main developer getting ill, it didn't quite make it to that glory. So it was a little bit of a disappointment, but it still is a really cool game and I really like it. So, Drunken Master Paul, now you are you are really into mechs. I am really into mechs. Uh, you've actually built one. For yes, real. <laughs> I did. I actually built a, a Herc. Yes. But yes, I actually wound up building one. Uh, the way this came about is I used to go to Gen Con in Milwaukee with Sierra uh, to do all the promotions. And we got there and Microsoft had this beautiful, beautiful mock-up of, I don't even think it was a mech. I think it was another game like a Heavy Gear or something. Mm. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> It was beautifully done. I looked at that thing, and I knew Star Siege was coming out. I go, we, we've got to have one of these. Come on, we can do that. I can do that. I'm laughing because it says so much about your personality. Yeah, right it, it really is. <laughs> See that? I can do that. Just give me some time and some money. <laughs> so I actually talked one of the uh, producers down at Dynamics into funneling me a little bit of money to get this started. So I drew up plans, and I, yes, I built a 15-foot-tall 
working, not walking, because if I built a walking mech, I would be, I wouldn't be doing this video. Dude. Well, you would have got a call from the Pentagon, basically. Yeah, saying, no kidding. Yeah, Tony Stark. Yeah, when yeah. can you start? Yeah, no kidding. But no, I'm here doing videos on YouTube. Yeah. So this person was giving me a little bit of promotion money because I was going to build this for next year's Gen Con, and I designed it. I built the entire structure. The entire thing's built by hand and shaped by hand and it's based off of the the first um cybrid you see in the in the video the mm -hmm. opening video of the game the one that kind of looks like an alien that one and it's I, I actually saw that just that scene it was a quick glance at the front before i saw the whole thing so that's why mine looks a little bit different it's got that big alien head on it but if you look at it that entire top piece pivots it tips forward and back and it fires Nerf balls. You sit in it, it's all pneumatically driven. You sit in this chair, and it had switches for the pneumatic. And it, was, it wasn't smooth at all. <laughs> no, I was getting whipped like. But it took me a really long time to do, but I finally got it built. Um, it was really a labor of love. Yeah. And it was a ton of fun, and I brag on it to this day. Okay, so that's our quick little loving retrospective to the Earthseeds, Starseeds universe. Love those games. I loved them from the beginning when I got to play Earthseeds 2, soon out of beta when I was working at Sierra, and I may have played that game on the clock a little bit. Oh, I know, I know I did. I definitely did. Now, that was just three games out of the, the series. There was actually a bunch of those. There was Hunter Hunted, there was Battle Drome. Right, love Battle Drome. That was like an arena game with the, with the mechs. It was a ton of fun. Way ahead of its time. And then there were the real-time strategy games like Cyberstorm. Now, Cyberstorm was, it was cool because at the time Cyberstorm came out, I was actually writing for Interactive Magazine. And it came out with a sticker that gave it a five-star rating from Interactive Magazine, which was Sierra's own marketing magazine. So what kind of marketing hubris do you have to have to give your own game five stars and put a sticker on the box? <laughs> the marketing stone. That is so funny. But the series actually ends on a high note, and that is the Mighty Tribes. Tribes, yeah, that was part of the Star Siege universe where it's more the ground forces. Mm -hmm. And Tribes was, you basically got to build your squads and it had a huge online following. It yeah. was a ton of fun. Way ahead of its time. I mean, this is back whenever there was Unreal Tournament and uh, Team Fortress. I mean, it was right. really big. And so th this was their take on that. And, you know, even to this day, people are super passionate about tribes. Yeah, I really wish that they could have gotten to the development point where they could have combined the universes. Because that was the goal of the game with Star Siege and Tribes, was eventually we'd have this game where you mm -hmm. had the big hurts and you'd have your ground forces and all the integrated. But unfortunately, they never got that far. Yeah. Maybe someday. So they're not perfect, but I definitely love this series. Love them to death. Yeah. Big robots with weapons that go boom! <laughs> That's a good weekend in my book. All right, well, I want to thank you for watching my channel, and thanks for subscribing. Take care. Later.